All right, I've been talking about the iPhone 15 Pro Max recently and shooting ProRes log, but one thing I haven't covered, but I've been playing with is recording out the USB port using various accessories to do external recording. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So in my reaction video, when the phone was released, I talked about the USB port, but I talked about recording out to a Atomos recorder, like to a SSD, but built into a monitor. I hope that comes, it's not out yet. So what we can do though, is record to an actual SSD. I would love the ability to go out the USB-C to an HDMI into an Atomos, because then you could choose whatever flavor of ProRes or codec you wanted, and then you can monitor at the same time. Don't get me wrong, recording to SSDs is a great option, but I would like to see this port really opened up. And there is a rumor that's coming to some third-party apps, but it's not here yet. So in the meantime, let's talk about the best ways to get video out of the phone and why you would need to do it. This is a one terabyte 15 Pro Max, and so really, I don't need to go out to an external drive because I have quite a bit of storage in my phone. But the reason you would need to is if you wanna shoot 4K 60 ProRes because you can't do that internally in the native camera app. Now you can in some third party apps, but we'll talk about the native camera app first. So I'm using just a little B-Script tripod here and the Moment tripod mount that has MagSafe in it. This is a 15 Pro Max. All right, I'm in the native camera app now. I'm shooting Apple ProRes Log, and you can see that I've got 124 minutes, so just over two hours. And this is a one terabyte phone that I think I have maybe 75% free. So that's pretty good. So I really don't need to go to an external. However, if I try to go to 4K 30, I get 115 minutes, it works fine. 4K 60, ProRes not supported. So you can only do that on an external storage device. And so I just so happen to have a T5 Samsung drive here. I don't think they make these anymore. If they do, they're, they're old. They now have the T7, which I have one of those too. But I want to show that the older ones work just fine. Now, one thing you'll notice, I just plug the drive in and usually you get a little icon that says USB-C. It's not showing up. And that's because you cannot record out externally except using the ProRes codec. And because I tried 4K 60 a second ago, it turned it off. Now I'll re-engage it. And now you see USB-C down here and I can get 76 minutes of this drive. Now this is a 512 drive and it's mostly empty. You can see that you don't get a lot of media going out to an external, you gotta have a lot of space. Again, my phone is one terabyte and I got 124 minutes. And so if this was a one terabyte, I'd probably get about the same or a little bit more because it's a little emptier. So if I go to 4K 30 though, it drops down to 61 minutes. And if I go to 4K 60, which you can record, I only get 30 minutes of footage. And so you can see going out, you gotta have a lot of storage to make it work. But the nice thing is it does work with these relatively inexpensive SSDs. I think a T7 512 gigabyte is about 80 bucks. So SSDs are a nice solution. They're a little bit bulky though. So you would be hard just to hang this off your phone and walk around and shoot. But if you wanted to Velcro it to your tripod or to a case or something, which I would recommend using a case probably from using an SSD, it becomes a good option but it doesn't have to just be an SSD. You can also go out to cards such as a CFast card. Now this is a Angelbird, it's a 512 gigabyte, it's 560 megabytes per second, so it's really fast. And by the way, these drives get up to a thousand megabytes per second. So these are really fast, so are these. I use this actually with my Red Komodo, but now this card is like 300 bucks. And so, and you can get one terabyte versions of these cards and they're like 500. So they get really pricey, However, they're really fast and they have a lot of space on them. And so we'll try this. And this is actually a red card reader, red digital cinema. Now this is a little bit bulky, but again, it's a pretty cool solution if you wanna shoot ProRes to an external drive. So now USB-C lit up and this drive's pretty much empty and I can get 73 minutes at 4K 30. Most of the time I shoot 4K 24, but 4K 60, I can get 36 minutes, 4K 24, 92 minutes, so that's quite a bit. That's a good That's a good amount. And as a side note, the only time I would really ever shoot 4K 60 is if I'm doing slow-mo. 60 frames per second in my world, in the film world, is designed for slow motion. You get a 40% slow-mo look. And so yeah, this is a good solution, but again, see how big the card reader is? You could potentially you know, mount this with some Velcro to a cage or whatever, but it's a little bit unwieldy. 
And so I have a smaller USB-C drive, and this actually is one that has USB 3 that has a USB-C adapter. And this one was like $20 or under, maybe 15 bucks on Amazon. This is like $100 from Red. Now, just for fun, I have a 64 gigabyte card here. It's a really fast card though, 515 megabytes a second. It's CFast 2. However, pop that in and see how much time I get. I've got 124 minutes right now on my one terabyte phone. So you get 11 minutes. <laughs> you get 11 minutes on a 64 gigabyte card. Now, that's not bad if you just wanna grab a couple shots, but you know, you couldn't go out and shoot an entire afternoon with that. But as a matter of fact, you really couldn't shoot an entire afternoon with any of these solutions externally. And even internally, it gets sketchy. The best thing to do is record internally if you have a bigger phone and then just transfer using USB-C for portability reasons. If you have time and can rig one of these, then getting a bigger card or, you know, get a two terabyte SSD and you'll have plenty of storage, plenty of time. But the main thing I wanted to show here is you can use a cheap USB-C reader and any kind of CFast 2 card or any kind of card for that matter, and it works fine. And speaking of that, the cheapest solution and the easiest solution might just be to use an SD card. And that's what this is. Now, I use these on my Sony mirrorless camera, and most of the ones I have are 128 gigabyte. I don't like buying the 256 cards because on a Sony mirrorless camera, you'll get hours of footage on this, and I don't like to have to transfer that. And on top of that, if you lose a card or a card gets corrupted, I don't want to lose as much media. So 128 gigabyte is fine, but if I start doing this with the iPhone, I would probably buy 256 gigabyte cards. And this is the official Apple reader, USB-C to SD. And by the way, I'll have links to all this gear in the description of this video if you're interested. This is a really great solution though. You pop it in, it's super lightweight, and boom, there it is. Now again, 128 gigabyte, 4K24, I get 23 minutes of footage. <laughs> so if it was double that, you'd get about 45 minutes or so, which isn't bad. And the nice thing, of course, about SD cards is you just have several with you. When you're dumping your files to your computer, then you can pop the SD card in and keep rolling. This card though, just to show, is a 250 megabyte per second card. I've heard rumors that Apple recommends 200 megabyte or more, but then I've seen guys online use cards that are much slower, like 90 megabytes, and they seem to work fine. But I would probably stick to the faster cards. It's all I own anyway, just to be safe. So again, 23 minutes on that card. But it's an awesome thing to be able to record out within the native camera app. But what about other apps? Okay, now I'm in the Blackmagic camera app. And at the time of this video, to my knowledge, this is the only third-party app that lets you record externally. There are other apps now like Filmic Pro that support Apple Log, but they don't go out the USB-C at this point. Now the Blackmagic app, I haven't done an overview of this. I will in the near future. It's kind of buggy right now. The screen looks really funky. I think it's in HDR mode when you're shooting Apple Log, so you can't trust it, which is unfortunate. Hopefully Blackmagic will be fast on their updates, but they haven't been so far but the app is brand new, so I'm cutting on some slack. Hey, Future Blade jumping in here real quick. Just wanted to note that while I was making this video, coincidentally, the Blackmagic app has been updated. So several of the problems I'm mentioning here have actually been fixed. So it looks like Blackmagic's going to be pretty good at updating the app, which is a good thing. But at any rate, the one thing with the Blackmagic app, and it took me a little while to figure this out, when you plug in something to the USB port, it doesn't automatically show right down here. On the Blackmagic camera, you click this and you can Look at the drive. Doesn't work the exact same in the phone app. So right now I'm recording directly to the phone. But what you need to do then is go to settings. You can see right here I'm recording ProRes 422, Apple Log. But you go down here to media and then it's save clips to. Right now it's in app only. And here you have to go to files and then you need to find the drive. And if you go to browse, you look over here, it's untitled. Untitled is empty, but I'll hit open. Now it's saving it to the files, which is going out to this SD card. Go to camera and now it's switched. And you can see now I've got 35 minutes and 32 seconds of room to record. I'm recording an Apple Log ProRes 422. And as a side note, that's one thing really great about recording in third-party apps is because in the native camera app, you can only record ProRes HQ. In here, you can record a variety of codecs, even HEBC, an H.264 with Apple Log, I think, a little caveat there. I've tried recording Apple Log into these other codecs 
and it looks a little funky. So I'm not 100% sure that is ready for prime time yet, or maybe even possible, although it lets you do it, but I'm not sure it's actually recording properly. But nonetheless, you can definitely record into other ProRes flavors, which is great because ProRes HQ is huge. The files are huge. I mean, all of them are big. For everyday kind of stuff, ProRes 422 or LT is fine. Even proxy can be good. I've done that quite a bit. But if I'm shooting log, I want to shoot 422 or more. And if you're doing visual effects or heavy color grading, HQ and 4444 is great, quad four, but it just depends on what you're doing and how much media you have. And in this situation, again, I've got 35 minutes going out to 128 gigabyte card. And you had no other indication on the screen like you do on the native app. But once you do get it to the SD card, you can see down here that it changes. And if you want to go back to recording to your camera, you have to manually do it. Let me pull that out. Go back to camera and it's flickering. It's kind of buggy and it's like, oh, it doesn't know where to go actually. Put that back to save clips to in app only. And I do in app only, by the way, because I don't want my big ProRes files to clog up my iCloud backup going into the Photos app. But now you can see I got three hours and 39 minutes recording to the internal drive. So again, great, you can record out the USB-C using the Blackmagic camera app, but you have to manually set it up. It doesn't automatically sense it or automatically know it's there. Now, one last thing I wanna show is rigging up the SSD using a DIY phone cage. All right, so here is a rig that I have built. I call it DIY, it's because I've Frankenstein a couple of things together. Got a small rig tripod, quick release, and this is the old school B-Script Pro, which, you know what's funny is I have all these different cages and such, and often I just default back to this one. I've had this like six or seven years, whenever it came out, 2017, 2018, I don't remember. Maybe it's five years, but nonetheless, I really like this cage, and I like this half version for the phone sticking out here, although you can, of course, put lenses on this side if you wanna use their mounts and such, but for this purpose, Really, I'm just using it to hold the SSD. And so it's the cage, the phone, and then over here I put a cheese plate because I stole this little small rig mount. It's an SSD mount from my Blackmagic camera. It's designed for the Blackmagic camera cage. And so that's why I say it's Frankenstein because I did get it to fit on this cheese plate here. I mounted the cheese plate to the B-Script Pro, a quarter 20, and then I mounted this small rig SSD holder to that and it has two screws, but I can only get it to work with one screw. I'm hoping B-Script or someone comes up with a case or a cage that will hold SSDs or even just SDs or CFast or whatever. And again, you could Velcro it to it if you wanted a more temporary, easy to use solution. But if you're shooting something more serious, like a short film or you know even a feature film or whatever, having something more stable and more permanent like this is the way to go in my opinion. So we'll mount that there, and the SSD drive goes into this. You tighten it down, and the cable comes out the back here. I like these little flexible cables, but this one might not be the best because it probably needs a little more length on it to be able to twist around, but it works for these purposes. Plug it into your phone, USB-C indicator is on, and I've got 76 minutes to go. Pop this off. Be shooting handheld with an SSD, or you can put it on a tripod. And so you're shooting, you fill up the drive, you just pop that off, plug in your computer, or you could even edit off this. If you use LumaFusion, you could plug this right into LumaFusion on your iPad and you're editing. Or if you use a traditional computer, again, these are super fast, you can edit off these, or you can transfer it to your computer. So we're living in a pretty cool time as it comes to filmmaking technology. I've been pushing the limits of this stuff for quite a while, if you follow my channel. I've been using phones since 2012, really, and each year they keep getting better. But finally, just in the last couple of years, really since the iPhone 13, when we had ProRes, have they really been able to match in well with traditional cameras, be used as a B camera, or be used in their own right as an A camera, depending on what kind of project you're doing. But now with Apple Log, recording out to an SSD. I've said this for years, but I mean it even more now. There's no excuse. If you wanna make a short film or any kind of music video or even a feature film, just get out there and do it. Oh, and by the way, I do offer LUTs for Apple ProRes Log. I use them in this video, and if you're interested in those, please check the link in the description. 
Thanks for watching. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.